All right. Today I'm going to be uh, installing the Carolina Shooters Supply Catamount Fury trigger conversion into my Catamount Fury 2. Um, basically, what this kit does is takes it from having your standard pistol grip stock or on the Catamount Fury 1, the standard rifle stock and uh, moving the trigger group forward so you can do a standard pistol grip and more of the standard style AK stock or a foldable stock or collapsible or whatever you desire as far as uh, stocks go. Um, basically when you get the kit you're going to get pretty much everything I've got laid out right here. Um, a nice little instruction pamphlet that gives you pretty much step by step instructions on how to install this entire kit and then they also included which I think is really cool a template for cutting out the slot to be big enough for your single hook trigger um, as you can see I've got mine cut out for a double hook trigger just in case I ever uh, decided that I wanted to put a double hook trigger in there um, I don't really know why I'd do that but I just figured I'd, I'd put it in there might as well while I'm doing this cuts. Um, one thing you want to do besides uh, cutting this trigger hole open a little bit longer and putting your notches in for your hooks is you're going to want to drill this hole right here, the one closest to my finger. Um, basically, this hole right here is a 8 30 seconds uh, drill bit that I used on that and that's going to be so you can mount the Carolina Shooters Supply uh, trigger guard on there but as far as um, prepping the receiver with this elongating this hole and drilling that hole um, and of course getting the firearm ready or to this stage you're going to want to go on to uh, Carolina Shooters uh, YouTube page and watch part one and part two of the Catamount uh, Fury conversion. Uh, it'll get you everything you need as far as taking the gun down, taking your old trigger group out, uh, elongating this hole, which um, I prefer to use a Dremel on something like this so you get clean cuts, and then of course drilling that hole uh, right behind the original hole there. And uh, you'll see I've got a little piece of tape over this. This is just because I've got a square cut out here for a standard AK grip nut um, which I won't be using on this conversion but uh, I just wanted to let you know why I've got that you know that tape covered up that spot there um, basically you're gonna be running one of your screws is gonna end up going through your old trigger hole right there um, basically one of your trigger guard screws is going to come through here and you'll use a provided washer they send you with the kit. Alright, so as you can see I've already got my receiver prepped. Um, I've got my holes cut and ready to go. And another thing that I'll, I'm going to um, put in there is that I removed the factory uh, bolt hold open. It's just extra weight and it tends to uh, rub my finger in the trigger guard and I don't like uh, the way it cuts into my finger. You could probably smooth that, but being that I don't really use the bolt hold, hold open on this gun, and it's not really a standard thing on AKs, I just completely removed that mechanism because I don't need it. Um, only thing really that you're going to want to keep for right now, um, after you take your gun apart, is two of your original trigger pins um, or trigger group pins and the original shepherd's crook and the reason I say that is Carolina Shooter Supply includes uh, plugs to plug those holes but they only fit the two holes on the right side of the receiver and the holes on the left side are too large now they are working on getting bigger plugs um, for the trigger pin holes that are larger um, they just didn't have them yet, so I don't have them with my kit. But I'm sure they'll be sending those in the future um, or something else. But what I did was basically I took the original Shepherd's Crook, which 
would have been a straight bar that looked similar to this. I don't know how well you can see that. But uh, I took that shepherd's crook and I cut the end off of it. And the hooked end, let's see, yeah, you can see the hooked end is the end that I'm using. And I might have left maybe two inches on there. And I just added a couple of uh, bends in it to make my own shepherd's crook. Uh, that's something I'm not going to go real deep into, but um, it works. And I'm going to go ahead and throw that in now. Basically, uh, I'm not a big fan of the plastic plugs that people use to plug the holes in the receivers when they do these conversion kits. Uh, so I, I preferred to uh, stick with a standard shepherd's crook style. And the two farthest back holes um, for your original trigger group are not in use with this conversion kit. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put the original pin back in that hole and that hole through the two holes side by side um, on the farthest back lowest two holes. So just give me one second and I'll kick these into place. Like I said, I kind of made my own little shepherd's crook there. So that's something you may may want to try to do. Otherwise, um, you can get uh, hole, hole plugs that'll fit those. Um, but it's just, you know, personal preference for me. One of the things that I've noticed uh, doing these conversion kits is uh, you save a good bit of money from going to a gunsmith and they're really not that difficult to install with a little bit of mechanical skills. Um, you just got to be patient and take your time. You know, anything that you're cutting, measure twice, make sure everything's exactly how you want it before you cut and uh, just know that you it's really hard to add metal back if you cut too much or if you drill a hole in the wrong place. Um, so you want to really take your time with something like this. Don't rush through it and don't do it on a day where you've got um, things going or people around that could be distracting you or bothering you. But yeah, basically you can see I've got the two holes plugged with the original pins now. And I don't know if I can get a shot of it. Yeah, you can kind of see it. I've got the original um, Shepherd's Crook just kind of locks into place, um, similar to how it came out, but of course shortened because it would hang out the back of the receiver. All right, so now that I did that with the original pins, I can just set these hole plugs to the side, uh, maybe for a different project or something. Move this grip down. All right, so the first thing I like to do, and uh, I recommend doing because the trigger is going to get in the way uh, if you don't do it first, is put the trigger guard on. And again, you'll have to elongate that hole and or that yeah the hole for the trigger and drill your hole there. Your screw with your washer is going to be to the farthest back side. The farthest back side here where my finger is. Um, I am not going to run that in right now, um, but you want to make sure that you use the washer on that farthest back hole where the square hole cut is. Um, that washer will keep it from popping through on you in the future. All right, so I'm going to flip this over and hold my trigger guard in place. line up the front farthest most hole on the trigger guard with the hole that I drilled. Um, you want to make sure that you put it in the hole you drilled and not the factory hole because the rest of the holes won't line up on the receiver. Um, and of course you'll you'll notice if you put it in the wrong hole because your other holes will not line up. And you really you want to drill your hole there as close to the other hole as you can get kind of without breaking through. Um, otherwise you'll have to kind of 
flex the uh, trigger guard a little bit to line up that second screw. Now that's an aluminum machined uh, trigger guard. So I, I don't, you don't want to force the screws as you're uh, starting them. If you feel any kind of resistance, uh, you want to back off and see what you're doing, maybe line up the holes again. And what I always recommend doing is leaving all three of your screws fairly loose until you get all three of them started. Uh, once you get all three started, then you can go ahead and snug them up. That'll kind of keep you from stri stripping your uh, bolt holes out. With these, I would recommend putting a drop of blue Loctite on each screw. Uh, I kind of keep them from vibrating loose on you in the future. But it's not a, a super big deal because these do, they tend to lock in pretty well with the uh, aluminum. Alright, so I've got that installed. You can see that looks real nice on there. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and just put my trigger group together. What you want is uh, you've got a, a disconnector spring. You're going to put that into the actual disconnector and you want to be careful not to lose that. And there's a little uh, slot that's cut for that spring inside of the trigger. You just set it in there and then I kind of use my fingers to line it up. And you're going to use this uh, roll pin. It's more of a tunnel roll pin, but you're going to use that to hold your disconnect in place. And it just kind of slides through there. It's snug, um, but you can slide it with your fingers. You shouldn't have to uh, hit this with a hammer at all. If it's not wanting to go through, you're just not lining it up well. And I like to just kind of center that up and make sure that your disconnect uh, moves freely. As far as your hammer goes, um, you can see they kind of machined one side down and right here. I'm not sure what they machine that for, but it, I'm sure it's to clear something uh, inside of the receiver that isn't normal on like your uh, standard AKs or your uh, Sega 12s. But it's, they do really good machine work. I mean, that's that's clean. As far as uh, your standard pins, you don't want to lube those with a wet lube, or I don't recommend you lube those with a wet lube. I would use a graphite, if anything, because the wet lubes tend to attract dust and dirt and just tear things up worse than they are. But uh, what I'm going to do is, basically with the hammer facing up, so if the gun was sitting normal like this, your hammer is going to sit inside of there like this. You want your hammer spring with the loop kind of flat with the ground and up. If it's down, that's no good. So with it sitting just like that, I'm going to work one side in just like this and these these can be tough um, you just take your time again and and try not to hurt yourself uh, with these once you start putting them under compression because uh, these can bite you pretty good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the spring all the way around and I'm gonna lock it behind the hammer just like that And I'm gonna hold that with my pointer finger they call it a snake bite because basically you've got that spring under compression and if that was to pop off of there, it'll come around and kind of tag you with that sharp end. And they can cut you pretty good. So I, I recommend keeping a finger on these springs once you have them in place. I just hold them like that. And then I like to use a bread twist tie, which is a pretty common thing uh, with guys who work on AKs when they're taking these uh, hammers out. And basically, the twist tie will just keep these from moving around on you. And uh, what I do is I'll wrap it around the top so it holds that in place. And then I'll come down around the lower side and just get a twist or two um, to keep the springs from moving on me. But uh, generally you could just pinch it up top there and you'll be alright. So now my hammer spring is compressed and ready to drop in the receiver and it's held in place so I'm not sitting there fighting with that spring the whole time I put it in. Uh, so that makes things easy for you. What I just noticed is I, I left the, the safety stop out. That's not a big deal um, as far as where I'm at. Uh, basically, this piece right here is going to go underneath the trigger guard right there. 
and it just keeps your safety from dropping down below the receiver. So let me go ahead before I start putting this trigger group in and put that in there. It's pretty important to have that part. Um, without that, your safety can go down a little too far, and uh, you don't you don't want that. So I'm just going to take this front screw out. It goes underneath the farthest forward screw on your trigger guard. I'm going to loosen this back one up just a little bit. And what you're going to do is with the gun in the upright position, it's going to slide in with the L bracket facing up on the receiver. And like I said, that's going to act as a stop for your safety. And it's got a hole drilled so you can run your screw down through that. Sorry I left that out guys. That's, that's kind of important. And again, I'm just going to tighten these up. I don't recommend with that size screw going much over, uh, you know, 25 or 30 inch pounds. But again, if you just put uh, a drop of blue Loctite on there and snug those up, they'll be perfectly fine. You can see I've got that on there now, and what that'll do is it'll keep my safety from dropping down past a certain point. Um, and that's again, that's cut really nice. It's it's not a it doesn't have any real sharp edges or anything like that. All right, so I got my trigger group assembled. I'm going to start with uh, the trigger. And basically, this is going to um, drop into place, but you've got to kind of manipulate this thing around to get it to drop into the receiver. Um, basically, the two rails that your bolt rides on blocks it from just dropping straight in. But if you kind of move it around a little bit, it'll drop right into place for you, no problem. And you'll take one of your pins and just slide it through. The pins they provided are real nice pins too. Um, it's not uh, cheap quality and they fit really snug. There's no no play in the receiver with those pins, which is another nice thing. All right, with the hammer, once I have that pin in place, I'm going to come in with the hammer. Um, your spring may stick out a little bit. You just got a same concept, kind of put it in at an angle and wiggle it around until it slides into place. You want to try not to force that. It will just slide into place smoothly if you just manipulate it around a little bit and then again I'm gonna put that pin into place and just kinda set it in for now All right. as you can see with the uh, hammer spring tied up it, it makes it real easy to move everything around and get it into place the last thing you want to do when you're putting your trigger group in is uh, you're going to slide your shepherd's crick into place. I had to trim, I'd say roughly an eighth inch, maybe a little bit more than an eighth inch off the end of this because it was coming into contact um, with part of the receiver up here and uh, it just wasn't setting into place properly. So like I said, I just, I basically took it and, uh, and just trimmed a little bit off of there. And it, it made it fit perfectly for me, so. And it's going to slide in. I like to use needle nose when I'm moving these things around. Um, with my hands, they tend to... I can't get my hands in there with them. So what I'm going to do is it's just going to slide into place back here. And the long side goes down and the little loop in the back with the short end goes over the back and the short end is just going to stick straight up and you take the long end and you're actually going to pick it up over the front pin so it's going to it's basically going to come down around the back pin and then up and on top of the front pin so you know you can hold it in place with a pair of needle nose on the back pin and as you start to push it forward, I like to take a flathead and just kind of pick up on it and then use the needle nose to slide it forward. This could take uh, some practice to do if you've never done it before. Uh, don't lose faith. Just make sure that you uh, have it seated properly in there and that your uh, front axis pin, that that shepherd's crook doesn't go under it. You want the long end to go over that front crook. And then basically once I get it up on top of there, you just take the needle nose and push it forward till it clicks into place and it locks in pretty well. Uh, you don't have any issues with that either. 
And again, I had to cut a little bit off of there because it wasn't letting me kick it all the way into place. Some may be bent a little bit differently, so you don't have to do that. But just know if it's not, if it's a routed right and it's not kicking into place, you probably got to take a little bit off the end. All right, so what I'm going to do is while I'm holding the spring into place with this hand, I'll take my twist tie off and I'm going to take one spring at a time, pull it around and just lower it. What you want to make sure is that those springs land on top of the trigger. Uh, basically, you got your two trigger bars coming straight back like this. The spring is going to come over and hold that trigger in place, and it basically acts as a trigger return spring as well. Um, I could probably lift that up so you can see it. Um, but yeah, you can see those springs there. They're just sitting on top of that trigger guard, and they act like a trigger return. So now that I've got... The, the kit in, I want to push the hammer back and make sure it locks in place. Um, everything is good. What I'll do is I'll push that, that hammer all the way down and pull the trigger like the gun's fired. And I like to hold my hand here to keep it from dry firing. And I'm going to let go of the trigger and just make sure that it catches that hammer. Um, what you don't want is for that thing, when you let go of the trigger, to just drop all the way home. That means there's something wrong with the trigger. Um, but again, I've gotten several of these kits from Carolina Shooter Supply, and I've never had any issues with any of the triggers that I've gotten from them. They do great machine work as far as uh, fixing these triggers up. All right, so I'm going to send the hammer home and install my safety. Basically, the safety is going to sit straight up in the air like this and slide into the large hole. Once it's lined up in the smaller hole, it'll just rotate it down. And uh, I keep it in the fire position, lock the hammer back, and then I, um, or I keep it in the safe position, lock the hammer back, and start assembling the, the rest of the gun. Uh, with this one, just like any standard AK, uh, you want your bolt to be slid all the way forward, slide your piston into its hole. And you want to put a little bit of downward pressure on the bolt. You can see it kind of seats down and slide it forward. Uh, once it's once it's home, oh, I'm missing my rail. Safety's got to be off for that, guys. There we go. You can see it kind of kicked down in there and then slides home. And again, I'm going to put my safety back on this way. I don't accidentally drop my hammer while I'm working on it. I'm going to slide that spring into place. You want to make sure that this. Uh, little guard they put on there doesn't drop down behind uh, the bolt carrier like this because you can break these off and there we go and once that's set into place um, I just like to kind of pull this up so it's a little higher than it would